Hey guys, welcome to digit.in and today we're going to be talking about a very interesting device that we discovered while at Intel Extreme Masters in Sydney. This is the Intel NUC Hades Canyon. It's a mini PC the size of a Tiffin box, but it packs quite a lot of power. So let's quickly get on with it. In terms of the design, it's a fairly simple black box. You've got a textured top. On the back, you have a whole host of ports. On the front, you have a whole host of ports. And But what's really interesting is when you power this thing on, you have this glowing skull logo, which is kind of a signature thing for the Hades Canyon line. So you have that. And the heat management in terms of the venting, the, uh, the cooling is all the vents are actually at the bottom on the front and the back so you won't have to really worry about heat. We've been using this for a while and the heat has been managed very, very well. So the design is actually very, very simple. It's minimal because they really, you really can't do much with a box this small. Uh, that's also because they've just packed as many ports as they could on this thing as possible. On the back, you have like six USB 3.0 ports. You have uh, two display ports. You have one full size HDMI port. You have Thunderbolt ports. Uh, and then on the front, you have another HDMI port, you have another uh, USB 3.0 ports, two of them, and a Type-C port. So there's a lot of connectivity options. I haven't seen, in fact, like many desktops don't offer this kind of connectivity options as well. So low-end desktops, of course. So the processor on this is an 8th generation Core i7, which is mated with a Radeon Vega M graphics chip. Now this is, you may have heard of this, this is the first Intel processor that combined Intel and AMD is sort of on the same thing. So it's one of those. It also offers two SODIMM slots, which are, which can accommodate up to 64 GB of RAM. So that's 32 GB sticks each. It's laptop style memory. It's not desktop grade memory. So there's that. And it also has dual NVMe slots. So you can put up to two terabyte drives each in this for a total of four terabyte NVMe. It also comes with a uh, wireless card built in and these are the only upgradable components. So you can upgrade the RAM, you can upgrade the storage and you can upgrade the Wi-Fi card. In terms of what it offers on the inside, in terms of the performance, it's actually been pretty amazing. Our unit came with 8 GB of RAM uh, and 512 GB of storage on board, which is partitioned into dual disks of 250 GB each. So it was fine, not a big issue. And when we started playing games on this, it was very surprising. Now, it's not a gamer's machine per se. It's not something that hardcore gamers would go for. But when you're playing 1080p for casual gamers, that is 1080p at 60 frames per second was not a problem for this machine. Battlefield 5 ran absolutely fine, locked at about 58 to 59 frames per second with the graphics turned to high. Uh, Doom played again at locked at 60 FPS when we were running the game at 1080p at high graphics setting, so which is like one less than ultra. Same thing with Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, you know, you have such vast draw distances, you have so many reflections, so many refractions in fact even in that game, there's a lot of light play and even that game ran butter smooth on this. Even Crisis 3, if any, there are any fans of the old shooter, again 1080p, high settings, ran unlocked at 58 frames per second. So. From that perspective, for a machine that can literally fit into, you know, a, a satchel of sorts, it's pretty impressive. It does draw a lot of power and the power brick is pretty much the size of the box itself, which is slightly of a downside. But think of the options. You can take this machine from your home to your office and all you have to do is just plug in your monitors, you have to plug in your keyboard and mouse and you're good to go. Speaking of monitors, you can run up to six 4K displays on this. That's insane. 4K monitors, up to six of them. So, you know, we didn't try that. We don't have six displays lying around, but we do have a 4K and a 2K monitor and they ran just fine. Um, so to sum it up, the Intel NUC Hades Canyon, the current configuration that we got was impressive through and through. It handled gaming pretty well, decently enough. Um, it also handled our Lightroom processing of photos very well. We have a two gigabyte catalog, which has about 15,000 photos in there. No problem at all. It was okay to edit 1080p footage. Premiere was a little choppy because Premiere is optimized to better utilize CUDA cores, which is an NVIDIA thing. And this is AMD, so you've got OpenCL. Uh, but it wasn't like, it wasn't, obviously lagging it was there wasn't a lot of stutter so rendering was quick so there's even that so for creative professionals amazing device 
it is a little pricey though but what you could do is if you're not looking at heavy loads like this you could buy a cheaper version of the NUC uh, one which is not VR enabled ours was so if it's not VR enabled you do shave off about five to ten thousand rupees you could buy a lower end configuration with smaller storage and because it is upgradable the box itself is upgradable so you can eventually start putting in more components as and when your finances allow it but from a mini PC perspective, it was absolutely mind-blowing just how, uh, how versatile this machine is and how capable it is given its compact form factor. We're going to be doing a lot more with the NUC in the coming few weeks, so stay tuned for that. But for now, that has been our review of the Intel NUC Hades Canyon. Thank you guys for watching this video. For the latest technology updates, subscribe to Digit.in and don't forget to hit the bell icon.